In Chicago, over the years, and just looking back at the uh, Jim Lutz show, which um, I saw Jim Lutz's graduate exhibition at the School of the Art Institute, and the Death and the Bulldog was one of the, the paintings in that show, uh, which was up on sort of rickety panels, kind of in a hallway, and I, I knew right there this artist was going somewhere, and I was so pleased to learn that he had actually come from the, the West Coast, uh, not directly from Seattle, but coming out of Seattle through some teachers he had, and Mark Toby, um, influence, and came to Chicago because he was drawn, he told me, mm -hmm. um, by the images, so-called images teachers who were teaching at the School of the Art Institute, that that West Coast funk and the Chicago imagism was uh, a calling card for many artists who came in from elsewhere. So we have a long and complicated history of what we have to offer calling people Chicago artists and then what happens when we call people Chicago artists. And we also have uh, the situation where it becomes something that's limiting because you can become very well known in your community for a variety of reasons and it becomes a turnoff for people out of that community. So that, that's something to think about. I also, um, I liked what Philip said about globalism because that's certainly an issue I deal with all the time. Um, I get really tired of going around to whatever city, wherever in the world, and you see all the same artists basically. But I just returned from um, New Orleans, the Prospect One Biennial, which has a generous representation of local area New Orleans artists. And there was something different about their work. I mean, they might have been, might have been working with ideas and in tropes that are all very common lingo, but they had a, a stylistic quality that I could just tell without reading the label that they weren't um, you know, from China or wherever globally, but they were rooted in uh, New Orleans. And I think you can kind of tell that in Chicago. And the thing that I've been thinking about more lately is really what draws this envelope for me around a Chicago style is, and Alan Artner probably would be very upset to hear me say this because he always railed against it, is craftsmanship. That there is a line of craftsmanship be amongst all the different artists, um, the ones who stay here long enough to become known as Chicago artists, or even those who were drawn here by teachers and maybe left already, the litany of people that you mentioned. Um, there is something about the city and the work ethic that you mentioned that seems to bring a certain craftsmanship. That doesn't necessarily mean material craftsmanship, but it can mean conceptual craftsmanship as well. And looking back with um, you know Leon Golub, who was labeled a Chicago artist belovedly here in Chicago, and probably, probably if he hadn't, he may not have sustained himself well enough until the art world caught up with him in the 80s to become an internationally known and recognized artist to Jim Nutt, whose craftsmanship just is astonishing. I skipped over H.C. Westerman, whose craftsmanship uh, really was uh, a legacy for many artists, not just in Chicago, uh, everywhere. To Jim Nutt, to, um, you know, you mentioned Helen Mira. I mean, there's a certain level of craftsmanship in the conceptual work of the younger generation that I think really wouldn't have happened necessarily with their work if they were elsewhere. I mean. I like to think that. Um, the other thing I think that really pulls a lot of the artists together is the image. And we all know the term imagist, and I think many of us know that that was a term that was come up with to describe the artist of the 50s, 40s and 50s, kind of taken over to describe the artist of the Harry Who groups and so forth of the 60s. But I mean, look at Tony Tassett's work. I mean, it's very much about the image. <laughs> And it's got an incredible um, load of surrealism in it, which is another uh, unusual and unique aspect of the Chicago community of the whole 20th century and, and into the 21st century. Because of what was collected here, because of uh, who saw what here, which artists struck that common chord that they may not have struck elsewhere. I mean, every community does have a certain essence. and. People become Chicago artists, I think, because uh, people become Chicago collectors, I think, because they enjoy being in that community. And we know there are Chicago collectors. There are people who collect mostly Chicago artists. 
And the benefit there is you get to know these people, you know, in, in friendships and relationships that are beyond just going to an art fair and buying something off the wall. So I, I'm, I was very jaundiced about the term Chicago art for a while. I'm much more thinking of it as an expansive term, more of a geographical term. I think the city offers artists some really great stuff like fairly inexpensive studios, which once you move to New York, you realize how lucky you were to have you know, a thousand square feet that's not very expensive. Um, and I think it offers a, a network of relationships through the art schools that is somewhat reflected in some other art schools, but nothing like what goes on here. I really think the art schools here provide an amazing network. So I'd love to hear what other people have to say, and um, I think we'll turn it over to Chuck. <laughs> Hello, Chuck, uh, Chuck Thoreau with the Hyde Park Art Center, who we get to celebrate our uh, 70th anniversary this year. Uh, and uh, of course, got started in the Depression, so we, we think uh, we're right at the right, right institution at the right moment. Um, <laughs> and in some sense, I kind of agree with you that Chicago might be the right city at the right moment. Uh, in terms of in terms of art and where arts arts going, uh, when Holland Carter Carter did his uh, review of uh, 2008, he started out with a statement about he remembered 1986 with the collapse then and how all of a sudden it opened up the art world to a whole host of things that that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't collapsed, uh, and that he's hoping that uh, again we have another moment in history that you have this kind of opportunity. Now. I totally agree with you in terms of Chicago artists that situation is so important in art uh, that uh, that of course you know the you know the schools the institutions around you the physical environment that there's probably indeed uh, Chicago artists if uh, they're living in Chicago uh, but I want to argue that we need a bureau of Chicago artists that will only let certain artists use that designation. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like, like the Bureau of Funny Walks. Right, yeah. right. yeah. like, show me your license. <laughs> yeah, and, actually, and I think we're on the cusp of actually having Chicago art. We're not there yet. And in the past, we, we've been there, but uh, we're on the cusp because I think it's a wonderfully uh, interesting and creative community. But it's kind of, and I don't know, it's kind of like when you're reading articles about the Museum of Contemporary Art in, in uh, Los Angeles, they're talking about you know, its influence on Los Angeles art. Uh, and that's obviously not an insult uh, to any of the artists living there. Um, but, and I think, and I think uh, some of the panelists have already picked it up. I think there's a unique thing about Chicago that has a real potential of leading and becoming a major force in the art world. Uh, and one, some of those things is uh, the community of artists. And uh, actually, I was very struck with Jim Lutz's uh, statement in his talk also about uh, how he had seen the, he was shown the Imagist work or the um, Harry Who artists from um, when he was an undergraduate in Seattle. And that was one of the reasons he came. And one of the things he said about that is that that art seemed to be permissioned. Uh, that it really kind of opened up all kinds of possibilities. And I think you were kind of aiming at that too, that, there, that there's a quite a wide open kind of feel in Chicago that you can, you can work in Chicago and try things out uh, and you're not having someone looking over your shoulder saying, oh, that's not abstract expressionism or whatever. That there's a kind of, uh, uh, of a permission, uh, a kind of opening up of uh, possibilities that uh, you might not find in other places. Uh, and I know it's also in the theater world, and Kerry James Marshall has mentioned this, and I've heard him say that one of the great things of working in Chicago is that kind of experimentation, that, that you feel that you can try things out here, while if you were in one of the big commercial areas of New York or Los Angeles, you know, there would be Mary Boone or someone looking over your shoulder saying, oh boy, he's losing it or something. But you can actually take risks here that you might not be able to take other places. Uh, and also, I think it's a, a wonderful community. I actually never lived in New York or Los Angeles, so I can't compare it. But 